Good morning. Welcome to Monticello United Methodist Church. We're, uh, we're excited to have you here to worship with us this morning. So uh, the theme for today is Yes, the theme is waiting. <laughs> Anybody here old enough to remember the, the uh, ketchup commercial uh, anticipation? And that, okay. People in the other service probably wouldn't know what I was talking about. I thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> so uh, theme, for, theme for today is waiting. What do you do when you wait? How do you pass that time? Uh, how long will you wait before you give up? And, and, pardon? That's a good point. That's a good point. So as Pastor Brian speaks to us today, as we uh, listen to the message, uh, ask yourself, what helps you wait? And what, what are you doing while you're waiting? The prophet Isaiah wrote, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And John, the messenger of God, proclaimed to all the people who came to him in the wilderness that they must repent of their sins and be baptized. Many people heard his message, repented, and were baptized in the river, river Jordan. It has become our custom to prepare for the birth of the Messiah by decorating our cities and homes, hanging lights inside and out, singing Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and measuring the quality of our Christmas morning by the number of gifts we receive.
as we light the second candle in preparation for the coming of the Messiah, perhaps we need to listen again to John the Baptizer message preparing the way of the Lord. Make straight, oh. Make straight the paths, repent your sins, be baptized, and live holy lives devoted to God. and welcome to the classic here at Monticello United Methodist Church. I'd like to welcome those who are listening to this live broadcast on WMRS 1077 and to those who will watch this delayed broadcast on Comcast Channel 90. 
At this time, our children are going to be coming down the center aisle and lining up, so I don't want anyone to knock anybody over, but the rest of you can turn and greet one another carefully. Good morning. Boy, that was kind of weak, but I'll take it because it's better than nothing. This morning, I want to talk about some different jobs that might be available if I wanted to work at a hotel or a motel. I kind of think, well, thank you for helping me there, Miss Elena. I kind of think maybe it would be fun to help people out if I was going to work in a hotel. So. The first thing I brought was a cleaning bucket. I had to clean the room. I got some Windex, I got some Lysol, I got some wipes, I got something to dust with. So that's one option I have. If we wanted to work outside on grounds maintenance, I got some outside gardening tools to keep the flowers pretty. If I had to do maintenance, I brought a little tool belt, not that I know what to do with any of these things, but it looks good, don't it? And if I wanted to work in, um, what would this be? Maybe, what? Well, I have a lifeguard. That might be an idea. But I was thinking maybe if somebody forgot something and they needed extra stuff, if they forgot it, they needed an extra towel or a toothbrush, I could be that person. And I could work in, just need to borrow one of these. Well, of course, Mr. Jones, I have a reservation for you. When would you like to come? Did you say you were going to come December the 24th? Sure. How many people might be in your party? Oh, did you say two? Sure. I would love to make a reservation for you on December the 24th. I could work in reservations. Or I could work at the front counter, and I could welcome you when you come in, just like I do here. And I could say, hi, nice to have you today at the inn. What's your reservation under? How can I help you? Oh, you've arrived a little bit early. Sorry, we don't have your room available for you. Do you have something you could do for about a half an hour and then we'll have your room ready? Or the last thing that I thought that we could be and everybody here wants to be is the innskeeper. An innskeeper. The innskeeper is responsible for knowing if you have room at the inn. When Mary and Joseph arrived at the inn, what did the innkeeper say? The innkeeper said, Hello. What did the innkeeper say? There's no room. They, Jesus had to be born in the stable. So it's up to us, and I hope that all of us want to be the innkeeper. I hope that all of us have room in our lives for Jesus. It's up to each and every one of us to decide, everybody here, if we want to have room in our lives for Jesus. We may not want to work in housekeeping. We may not want to do maintenance. 
We may not want to do room service. We may not do reservations. But all of us have the option to allow Jesus into our heart by being the innkeeper and saying that there is room in the inn. And I pray that each and every one of you allow Jesus to come into your heart. Let us bow our head for a word of prayer. Dear God, help us to know that each and every one of us are truly the innkeeper on whether or not you are part of our lives. I pray that each one of these people, every one of these little boys and girls, allow you to be in their lives every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up this morning, and now I guess you're going to sing.
This morning as we come to our prayer time, I want to uh, draw your attention to the connection card that's in your bulletin. Hope that you will fill that out and put it in the offering plate as it's passed later on in the service. But on the back of that connection card, if there are prayer concerns you have or, or praises that you would like to share, would encourage you to, um, to write those on the, the uh, connection card. If you would like only the pastors to see your prayer concern, then uh, mark it confidential. If you'd like it to be in the bulletin next week, be sure and mark it to, to go in the bulletin. Otherwise, if it's not marked confidential, all of the prayer concerns will go out this week on the email prayer chain. Also, we'll draw your attention to the prayer window on the back of your bulletin. Hope that you will use that as a prayer guide as you remember those in our congregation as well as in our community who are in need of prayer in, in this coming week. So as we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning, would invite you to, to join with me as we sing the, the chorus, Emmanuel. Lord, as we come before you in, in this day, we give you thanks that, that you sent Jesus into this world to be God with us. And Lord Jesus, we give you thanks that you sent your Holy Spirit to be present in, in the lives of, of each one who puts their, their faith in you. And so, Lord, in, in this day, I, I pray that your Holy Spirit would, would come near to that one who who feels far from you. I pray that your Holy Spirit would come near to, to that one who needs to know your presence, that one who needs your wisdom, that one who needs your guidance in, in their lives. Lord, as we come before you in, in this day, we, we pray for the, the Winnemac community. Lord, as they've faced the tragedy of a, a bus accident this week and we just pray that you would come around that community and, and bring comfort. And Lord, we pray for, for bus drivers and, and those riding buses in our own community and, and everywhere. Lord, we pray for, for their safety. Lord, we pray for the drivers as, as they do a, a good job driving and keeping the, the children safe. But we, we pray also that you would put a hedge of protection around them and and keep them from the, the dangers of other drivers on, on the road. Lord, for those parents that may be anxious about putting their children on a bus, and, and yet it's a necessity, I, I pray that you might calm those fears and those anxieties. For those bus drivers that, that have a responsibility with the children each and every day, I just pray that you would, would give them confidence as they drive, and also just a, an awareness of all that's going on around them. Lord, as we come to you today, we, we pray for those in our congregation who are in need of a, a touch of, of your healing grace. Lord, for those who are recovering from surgeries and, and procedures, we just pray that their, their recovery would, would happen quickly and without concern or, or complication. For those who are facing difficult decisions about um, options that are ahead of them, Lord, I pray that you would give them your wisdom. I pray for family members who seek to, to be a support, who, who come alongside and, and seek to give en encouragement. I, I pray that you would give them the, the strength that, that they need. And also that, that you would give them just comfort and, and rest as they know that, 
that they can trust their loved ones in, into your hands. Lord, in, in this day, we, we pray for, for the world in, in which we live, for those who, who don't have a, a safe place to, to live, for those who don't have adequate shelter, for those who don't have uh, adequate provisions in, in their life. Lord, I pray that, um, that you would bring those around them, whether it's relief agencies, whether it's food pantries, whether it's just a, a compassionate and caring individual. Lord, for those who are struggling to, to have what they need to, to be safe and, and secure and provide for their family, may you bring those around them that can help them in their, their time of struggle. Lord, as your people, may we be your hands and feet, making a difference in the world in which we live. We pray this all in Jesus' name, and we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, we are an Advent people. A people of hope. For us, Advent is a time of waiting, and so we wait. We wait for the coming of the one who is a fulfillment of God's promise, the fulfillment of hope, the declaration that we have been redeemed. Even so, we are not a naive people. We know that the world in which we live will continue to be filled with pain and sorrow. We know that hatred and violence will continue to exist. We know that death and separation will continue to be a part of our lives. But because we are an Advent people, we know that none of these things will win in the end. The Holy One is coming to make holy once again all that was, is, and ever will be. And in our waiting and our hoping, we work and worship, pray, and play in all things, hoping that peace, love, and joy will reign in our lives and in our world now and forever.
Well, this morning we're continuing our series that we're calling What It's Really All About, uh, Unwrapping the True Meaning of, of Christmas. Now, as I told you last week, we're going to unwrap, put, need, that's right, don't, don't give away what we're going to unwrap here. I told you last week that um, we were going to unwrap a, a present every week. And uh, so this morning, let's see what the present is. Mike, can you come and help me unwrap the present? Okay. Come and help me here. Can we, uh, can you get what's in the bag there? What is that? Dog food. Yeah, okay, we'll put it right here. That, that's a, thanks, Mike. So thanks for your help. Uh, you know, milk bone. You know, well, what does that have to do with, with unwrapping the, the true meaning of Christmas? Well, um, when I was growing up, we had a, a dog that, um, his name was Sammy. Now, Sammy, we got him when I was probably in kindergarten or, or first grade, and um, we, we had him actually until after I went away to, I had graduated from college. I, I can't remember. He may have even lived all through my, my years of, of college. But, um, you know, Sammy was a, was a playful dog, and, you know, most, most dogs, they, um, you know, they like to, to fetch, you throw him a ball, or throw him a stick, you know, go and get it and bring it back. And, and Sammy would do that, but what he liked to do most was you would pick up hands full of grass and throw it in the air, and he would love jumping up and trying to, to, to bite at that grass and, and to catch it. And so we spent, you know, hours outside playing with, with Sammy, throwing grass up in the air and, and him trying to, to catch it. Now, there weren't a whole lot of tricks that he knew. Um, you know, we never took him to, to obedience school. And I'm, actually, I'm not sure whether obedience school is for the dog or for the owners, but, but that's, uh, that's a, another, another story there. But, um, you know, one of the things, one of the tricks that, that Sammy could do was we would take a treat, we'd take a milk bone, and we would put it on his nose. And we'd say, wait, wait. You know, I, and he would leave it there, and, and you know, if, um, if we had him wait too long, you know, he would kind of begin salivating as he, <laughs> as he knew that uh, the, the, the treat would, would come. And, and when, he would, when he would start to twitch a little bit, he would wait, and then we would say, okay. But at that point, he would kind of dip his nose toward the, the ground and swing it around somehow, and he would grab that snack before it ever hit the ground. You know, waiting is often a, a word that, uh, that we associate with Advent. We talk about Advent being a, a time of, of preparation. We're, we're preparing to, to celebrate the, the birthday of Jesus. We're also preparing for, for his coming again. But in the, the midst of our preparation, you know, particularly when it comes to, to Christ coming again, it's an issue of we must wait. We must wait. You know, Christmas is only 15 days away, and for children, it feels like an eternity. But for some adults that just heard me say Christmas is 15 days away, you may have had a a shot of adrenaline and, and maybe even a, a little bit of anxiety at all the things that you need to accomplish in, in the next 15 days. You know, there's a lot of waiting in the, the Christmas story. Remember the, the story of, of Zachariah and Elizabeth. Now, Zachariah was a priest. Zachariah and his wife are, are described as, as, um, as those who were, were righteous in the eyes of God. Now, you may remember that Zachariah and Elizabeth were the parents of, of John the Baptist. And it was Zachariah and Elizabeth that Mary went to visit when she had her angelic visitation. Well, Zachariah and Elizabeth, uh, they had prayed for something for many years. But they had gotten old enough that maybe they even stopped praying uh, because they thought it was never going to happen. And that is that they wanted to have a child, 
but uh, they didn't think it was ever going to happen. And one day as, as Zachariah was in the temple, an angel you know, spoke to Zachariah and said, Zachariah, your prayers are going to be answered. You and your wife, Elizabeth, are going to have a, a baby. When the baby is born, you will, will give him the name John. And their son grew up to, to be John the Baptist. You know, it was a prayer that they prayed that they thought was never going to, to get answered. But in God's time, as they waited, God answered their prayer. How about Mary? She did a lot of, lot of waiting. An angel had told her that she had found favor in, in God's eyes. And if she was willing, you know, God was going to use her to, to bring his son into the world. You'll, you'll remember in the Christmas story on the night that the shepherds came to, uh, to the stable to, to see this, this one that had been born, this baby that had been born. The, the shepherds told Mary about <clears throat> all that had happened out in the field and how they had been visited by an angel and then a choir of angels and, and everything that they said. And, and Scripture tells us that, that as they spoke to, to Mary, you know, she remembered what they said. She pondered what they said, and, and she held it in her heart. I have a feeling that, that Mary did a lot of reflecting. She did a lot of pondering over the, the course of Jesus' life, those 30 years leading up to his public ministry, and then, then uh, the, all the 33 years up until he died. I'm sure she reflected on what the angel's message was to her before that child had ever been conceived in her. I'm sure she remembered what the shepherds said, what, what Elizabeth had, had said, several things that happened throughout Jesus' life. You know, she remembered, she pondered, and she waited about what does this all mean. In, in Luke chapter 2, there's a man by the name of, of Simeon. <clears throat> now, Simeon went to the temple every day. And S Simeon had had been given a, a message from God, and God told Simeon that you are not going to, to die until you see God's Messiah. And so Simeon went to, went to the, the temple every day with the expectation that someday he was going to, to see the, the Messiah. I can imagine that, that every day he kind of wandered around the temple courts Maybe thinking to himself, is this the one? Is this the one? Uh, maybe even from time to time, actually picking up a baby and, and taking it in his arms and wondering if, if this is the one. But on the day that Mary and Joseph brought baby Jesus to, to the temple to be dedicated to, to the Lord, as Simeon took baby Jesus in his arms, he knew this was the one. This was the one that he had been waiting for. This is the one that that he had been living for. And, and as Simeon saw the, the baby Jesus, as he saw the Messiah, he, he acknowledged that, that at that point, you know, his life uh, could, could end. You know, he, he had fulfilled his purpose. He knew that this was the long-awaited Messiah. And, and Simeon said to, to Mary, this child is destined to cause the, the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will, will be spoken against so, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul. You know, as Mary heard those words, the, the celebration, uh, the blessing that Simeon gave to, to her son, but yet also the questioning, the, the pondering, what could this mean that a sword, a sword will pierce your own soul? Well, 33 years later, when Jesus was crucified, Mary may have recalled that first day in the temple when Simeon spoke these words. She had to wait to fully understand what it was that, that God was, was saying, that God was revealing to her. There's a lot of waiting in, in the Christmas story, but there's also waiting in, in the Bible. Uh, the last words of the Old Testament, the, the words that in the last chapter, the last two verses of, of the book of, of Malachi, 
Uh, those last two verses say, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great day, great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with, with total destruction. God speaks to, through the prophet Malachi and says that there, there, there is one coming. And then God goes silent. For 400 years. God had given them a promise, but they had to wait. Listen to this morning's scripture reading that, and what it has to say about waiting. It's found in, in the book of 2 Peter, you know, chapter 3, beginning with verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness, but he is patient. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. The day of Lo the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in, in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and, and speed of its coming. The day will, will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and, and elements will, will melt in the heat. But in keeping with the promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Our lives are, are bound by, by time. But yet Peter tells us that, uh, that God is not bound by time. For God, a, a day seems like a thousand years, or a thousand years seems only like a day. So for us, you know, a thousand years is, is a long time. But for God, there, that, that's no time at all. You know, when Jesus said that, that he was going to come again, we want it, we want it to, to happen soon. You know, I, I was talking to someone this week, and, and she was talking to me about the, the challenges that she was facing, and, and then also began to, to tell me about some of, the, some of the challenges that she had to deal with after, after the first of the year. And actually, as I listened to her talk, she just kind of wore me down thinking about all the things that, uh, that she was facing in, the, in the, the months ahead. And then she said, Unless the Lord returns. And then she said, come, Lord Jesus, come. <laughs> you know, the Bible tells us that, that Jesus is going to return. Many of us believe that, that he is going to, to return. And some of us pray that he will hurry up and return, especially when we're facing tough times. But in the face of delay... Does it mean that God's not keeping his promise? To some, the delay may cause them to wonder if he will ever return. From our perspective, we may believe that, that God is, is slow and, and sometimes we may even doubt if he's going to act. But since God is not constrained by, by time, what we may perceive as God's sl slowness from God's perspective, it's simply patience. God is patient. He doesn't want anyone to, to perish. He wants everyone to, to come to repentance. God's slowness has nothing to do with his inability. It has nothing to do with God not keeping his promises. But it has everything to do with giving as many people the opportunity to make their lives right with God before Jesus comes back. Since Peter describes God's desire for, 
for people's hearts and, and lives to, to be made right with him as, as the reason for Jesus' return being delayed. There are many, including me, who believe that before Jesus' return, there will be a, a spiritual awakening. Because in the midst of that, that spiritual awakening, more hearts will, will turn their, uh, their, their hearts and lives, more people will turn their hearts and lives to, to Jesus. And, and in that process, more people will, will experience eternity in, in heaven. Maybe your very presence Maybe your very presence here this morning will hasten the return of Jesus because of what it is that, that he wants to do in, in your life. What it is that he wants to do to, to draw you closer to, to his heart. I want you to think of, of your, your own life right now. Is there any area of your life where God is showing you patience? Where God is showing you grace. God is giving you time to, um, to, to put things in, in order. Maybe God's giving you time to, to grow or to change or, or to repent. Is there something that you need to repent of and, and leave behind? Is there something in your life that you need to turn your back on in, in order that you can go in, in God's direction? Is it time to make an intentional investment in the spiritual life of your family? Is it time to, to stop dabbling at being a Christian whenever it's convenient, but it becomes who you are 24-7 and, and the way you live your life day by day? My last church, there was a, a woman who, who started coming to, to church after her, her son had been in a terrible accident. You know, fortunately, he, he lived through, through the accident, but it, it was a spiritual awakening for, uh, for her. And as she started coming to, to church, I mean, she was, um, you know, she was pretty rough around the edges. And as she started coming to church, she would sit in the very back. And often as she sat in the back, she would be crying on, on Sunday morning. And it was an issue that uh, Lisa had been living far from God and and um, you know, she was trying to make some, take some steps, make some decisions in, in her life that, that would turn her life around. Now, the, over time, you know, as, uh, as she put some things behind her, as she repented of some, some things in, in her life, she began getting her, her life right with God. She started moving up in, in the, the sanctuary where she would sit. Now, God was just as close to her sitting in the back as, she, as when she sat down, down front, but, but it was somehow that she felt like um, you know, she wasn't getting too close to God if, if she sat there in the, in the back pew. So just be aware of those of you who are in the back pew there. <laughs> but eventually, you know, as, um, as she started getting closer to God, as she started re repenting, turning her, her back on sin, it, it was an issue that um, eventually Lisa began playing in the, in, on the worship team. Uh, she, was, she was up front on, on Sunday mornings. Now, I'm not saying that everyone who, um, you know, once you, know, you make some changes in your life, all of a sudden you're going to be standing up, up on the platform. That, that's not for, for everyone. But, but you know, God, God worked in, in, in her life. You know, is there any area of your life in which God's saying, okay, it's time to make a change. It, it's time to repent. It's time for you to, to turn to me. Peter goes on to say that when Jesus returns, he's going to come like a thief. Now, it's not, he doesn't describe Jesus coming as a, as a thief because he's going to come and do something bad, but he's describing it as you, know, you don't expect the, the thief. You know, if you knew when the thief was coming, you, you would guard your house better. You would have a better security system. You, you would hire someone to, to protect you. You, you, would, um, you. you would call the police. If you knew when the, the thief was coming, you would maybe re respond differently. But as Jesus comes as a thief, um, 
places also and, and say that he'll come as a, as a thief in the, in the night. The, the message is that we need to be ready. We need to be ready for whenever it is that, that he may come. Peter tells us that the way we can be ready, ready is by, lead, by leading holy and godly lives. It's been said that um, there are some people that are so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. You know, there are people who, are, uh, who spend so much time waiting for Jesus that they're of no earthly good. You know, you've heard the, the, the phrase that a watch pot never boils. Well, have you, never no have you ever noticed that when you stand over a, a, watch, a, a pot on the stove that it takes so long for, for the water to boil, but if you go away and, and do something else, it doesn't seem like it takes the water very long at all. Now, it takes the water just as long to, to boil whether you're watching it or not, but when you're investing yourself in, in other things, it, it doesn't seem like it's as long. While we're awaiting Jesus' return, it's time for us to live holy and godly lives. Remember Simeon? Uh, the old man in the temple who, who met Mary and Joseph and, and the baby Jesus and, and blessed him and declared that he was the Messiah. I don't think that Simeon, I don't know how many years he, he went to the temple looking for the Messiah, but I don't think Simeon sat on a bench and just waited until something happened. I believe that every day Simeon went to the temple expectantly. I believe that he, he walked around. He walked around in the crowd and, and saw parents bringing their, their babies to, to dedicate them, them to the Lord. And, and I wonder over the years how many babies he held. Now, not that Simeon said the, the same words to, to each of those babies that he said to, to Jesus. But I wonder how many babies he picked up and blessed. And how many parents he, he prayed for. How many people he did something for. He didn't just wait until the Messiah showed up one day. But, but he was actively doing God's work as he was waiting. When we are actively doing God's work, the waiting doesn't seem as long. Peter urges his readers that, that we might be might be found spotless, blameless, and, and at peace with God while we are waiting. Invest yourself in, in God's business. Invest yourself in, in God's purposes. And as you do, when he returns, you won't be caught off guard. You won't find yourself unprepared, but you will be ready to meet Jesus whenever he returns. Waiting is part of God's plan. He doesn't want you to, to passively wait, but he wants you to actively wait. During the time of waiting, he wants you to become more like Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, in this season of waiting, I pray that it's not a time of inactivity. I, I pray that it's, it's not a, a time of, of doubting. But I pray that it's a time of, of growing closer to you. I pray that it's a, a time that, in which we are actively seeking to become more like Jesus. And that we're actively making a difference in the world in which we live. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.
Our memory verse this week comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. You know, a couple next steps for, for this week. Well, one is, I will seek to lead a more holy and godly life this week by blank. What is it that the Holy Spirit may have been stirring in you today? What may have been the, the Holy Spirit was saying to you, you need to repent of, or you need to turn your back on, or, or a change that, that you need, need to make? You know, as you respond to that, it's a way that you lead a more holy and godly life. You know, another next step is, I will be more patient with situations that frustrate me and, and give God room to, to work on me and on others. If God's patience with us is for the, the purpose uh, about us changing, what might our patience do to another person? Might our patience with a, a, another person cause to bring about a godly change in, in them, it's more likely our patience will bring about a godly change in them than our impatience will bring a change in them. Before we collect our offering, I want to remind you of one of the awesome ministries we have here at Mumsy. If you look out to our parlor, there's a tree out there called the Wise Man Tree. The Wise Man Tree is a space where you can give money to help out with emergency situations that are happening inside the congregation, inside the life of our church. Uh, there's a couple things that have gone on recently that I remember um, when someone who's in our life of our church needed help with prescription medications. The Wise Man Tree helps out with that. Or if someone has an issue, like an electrical issue, that they cannot fix immediately, the Wise Man Tree helps out with that. So it's an awesome way for you to be the church in Acts, the church that shares all things. So I just want to remind you of that. Uh, before we get to our offering, I want to remind you of a connection card. If you have any prayer concerns, make sure you put that on there. If you're a first-time guest, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Please fill it out as much as you possibly can so we can get in contact with you and be begin to communicate with you and get in a relationship. That'd be awesome. At this time, let's go ahead and pray for our offering. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for all that you've given us, God. And God, in the season of Advent, the season of waiting, we thank you that we can wait in the comfort that we do. We thank, that, we thank you that you provide so much in abundance, God. We ask you to take these, the gifts that we provide to you, God, the tithes and offerings, that, that you would take these things, Father, and multiply them for the glory of your kingdom and that the mission of this church can continue to reach out in love to our community. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. As the ushers come forward, I have a couple of announcements. First off, yesterday we had an event called the Little Elves Workshop. It was a lot of fun. There was slime and cookies and lots of hot chocolate and painting. It was a lot of fun. Um, we had over 50 children come, and about 60 to 70% of those were children that were not actively involved in the ministry of this church. It was a great outreach event, so we encourage you to, to celebrate that, because we're celebrating that as a way for us to reach out to our community. A couple other announcements we have. Uh, tonight, Friendship Connection will be having their birthday party for baby Jesus. And that will be at 5 p.m. at their normal time, pick up at 6.30. Also, our, our revolution will meet tonight at 5 as well, 5 to 6.30. For high school, for our 648 group, we are not having 648 tonight. We are gathering at the, the high school at 645 to go for the winter concert. We have a lot of our students who are active in both the band and the choir, so we are going to support our group. There is Soup for the Soul this Tuesday. Uh, sign up to serve and come and fellowship with us. It's really a great time. And please check the bulletin for other announcements. It's been a great day here at the Classic. We hope to see you back next week at either the Classic at 930 or the Current at 11. At this time, let's stand and sing our closing hymn. <laughs>
And now as you go forth from this place, may you know that God never forgets, that God keeps his promises, that he's coming again. But in his patience, he wants you to grow in ways of holiness and, and godliness. And so go out and, and be his witnesses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.